I need to amend and clarify the information that concerns the color mask script. There was a great discussion that came up right on the forum, which if you're not reading, I would highly recommend you visit. And uh, this was a discussion about the color mask script. Sadat brought up the idea that, you know, um, the values that I thought were being referred to, it's not true. The color mask script actually works in a different color space than the regular um, HSI space or HSV space. It's actually working in this particular LCH color space where you have chroma hue and lightness. And this H value here is not the same as the H here. They actually have different values along the color wheel. Now it still has a range of you know, 0 to 360, but the values themselves are different. So if you want to analyze your image, you don't analyze it with the big H hue. Instead, you change your readout mode here, and I, I can't show it to you, it's outside of my recording area, but you change it to the LCH mode, where when you click on the image, you will now see LC and H, and you'll get, uh, again, you know these values. But the values are going to be a little bit different now. So you should be operating only in this lowercase hue h um, that's in this particular color mode. So what's the big deal? What's the difference? Well, here is the idea. There are perceptual color spaces. And if you look at the regular hue space, it doesn't really show up well here, but um, you can look here. This has been rotated, but it's the same idea, same idea here. Zero in the regular hue space is red. But notice what happens depending upon how you change the brightness. If you do nothing else natively, if you make no other adjustment to the color space in hue, you'll notice that um, along places where there's a transition in especially the primary colors, you will get um, these kind of less colorful areas, basically. It goes to a little bit of gray the way that those colors mix with one another. And perceptually, um, that isn't the way that we want the color space to kind of work out. Instead, you want it to look more like it, actually this wheel, although this wheel's not representative of it, um, where you have a much better transition from one color to the next. They blend much better. And that's supposed to be the idea behind this different color space. But it also means by doing that, that the colors are not equally spaced in the sense that, uh, you know, here in this color wheel, we go from primary colors and they're nicely on these 120 degree spacings, right? That isn't how it works in H space. I will show you a, a lowercase H color wheel in just a moment. But first, I just want to be sure we're um, demonstrating what the confusing part of the tool is and how to go forward and think about it so that there is no confusion. So when again you click on the image you can get these values and you'll notice here red is zero but if I actually click on the image itself what is the value of red in this lower H space? It's 77. That is this weird value in this space. So there isn't going to be a rhyme or reason and most interestingly, if I come over here to green, 120 degrees away, you'll see 139 is now the H. That is not a difference of 120 degrees. So the wheel itself, as far as the color space, isn't, it isn't actually a nice circular wheel. There is a different density of color as you go along this 360 degrees, and that is because it's perceptual. The problem, just so you can appreciate it, isn't the math. It's not a color space problem. It's an eyeball problem, actually. It's the way that we interpret color um, with our eyes and brains. So that's the, that is the origin of this issue. But um, then if I go from green to, say, blue over here, green is, what is it, uh, 130, 138 or so, and you come over here to blue, and now you're at 307. Again, it's a different spacing. And then from red, 307 up here to 77. So... It's this odd thing, um, but we can demonstrate that um, this is the correct way to think about it. So let's look at the uh, script here once more, and we'll get the color mask script. So first, let me just talk about if I wanted to identify this color. If I did the following, 
if I said, hey, you know, um, let's try to get red here and we actually did zero, well, we can't put, you know, we can put zero, zero and that'll give us a tiny line, but let's make it a little bit of a range here. Let's do 358 to two. So we have a small range here and then I apply it to this image. What are we gonna get? Now the expectation is if these values were big H, we would get a little strip of white for our mask here. But that isn't what we're going to get because you know that little h values here are 77. And that should probably tell you, if it goes, counter, uh, if it goes clockwise, that the value is going to be somewhere over in this part. It's going to be left of here. So let's just see if that is true. And indeed it is. So zero in h space, you might wonder, well, what is that? Control page down. Well, zero is approximately some kind of magenta color. That's zero in the lower case H space. So now we're thinking in terms of this lower H hue. What do we need to do to get some little vertical line here to make it be our mask? Well, we know we know this value is 77. So we need we know we need to go to either side of that and we should get um, the right answer. Um, and the point here is that um, let me get color mask. There it is. The point here is that these values, the start and end hue, they are lower H values. Now I'm stressing this because I'm going to show you something in a second that's going to look confusing. Um, but we should be able to type 76 here and then, you know, 80 or whatever here. And that should make something like well, I did a bigger range than, it, obviously, it, like I said, the density is different, but it is going in that vertical direction. So we're getting the reddish hues uh, that we intended to get up there. So with that in mind, now let me show you the confusing part. This is the part that really threw me for a loop and I, and I suspect others for a loop. So let's say we wanted to select red and we just wanted to press the crazy little button. Everyone likes the easy buttons, right? That's what's, they're supposed to be easy. Well, press the button here and this says the start hue is 300, this should look familiar, and the end hue is 60. Well, if you look at an actual color wheel in the big H hue space, all reddish things are indeed, the full range of red is indeed from 300 to 60 approximately. I mean, you got orange here, red here. In the middle is red. Primary red is in the middle of that range. That, I think, until Rick um, says otherwise, I think that that is in error. I think that this should refer to the numbers that we're supposed to type in here. This is supposed to be in reference to lowercase h, not uppercase h. So that's what makes this tool a little confusing. When you press the red button, let's just go ahead and uh, show what that looks like. We would expect this would result in only red colors, but check out the mask. The mask includes blue. And that is not, I think, what was intended uh, for that button. So that button's range should be in lowercase h values and not in uppercase h values. Um, for example, if we actually wanted to do what I think that range was supposed to be doing, that is to go from here to here, well, we can look at the actual H values here. So we've got uh, 3, 3, we'll call it 3, 3, 3. And over here, we have, you know, 100, say. So now I'm going to do this one more time. So now if we type... 333 three, three, and we type 100 we should get what we were thinking we were going to get the first time around and there it is so the point here is that when you're working with your image just be sure to turn on the readout mode that shows you the H's the small lowercase h values so that you can properly pick ranges um, uh, of uh, colors in your image. I did find, however, although they labeled it differently here, um, I did find online that someone actually made a uh, an H lowercase h wheel. 
this here has values that roughly correspond. It's not exact. I think the, the yeah, this isn't really exact either. The actual values that we want, um, this is close, but it depends on the brightness. And that's kind of the problem here. The brightness is not as bright as what we're typically working with. But you can look online and try to find some color filter wheels that have um, actual small h values. Or one of the things I would like to do, actually, if I get a chance, is I'm going to make that wheel, um, or at least whatever shape it turns out to be in, and then we'll have a reference, visual reference. I think that that would be nice for this tool if you actually had a visual labeled reference showing um, where numerically all of these colors reside, even though they will not be equally spaced. I get that. Uh, but it would still be nice to show uh, what those distribution of values are on a color filter wheel or even just on a spectrum or something like that, which I think is probably easier to make, just a rectangular spectrum. So that is the idea. The values that you see here in this script uh, those are small lowercase h values, and that's what you need to do to correctly identify a particular set of colors in your image. So I'm going to try to do this one more time in one step. I'm going to click here. This says 69, 67. That's what we expect because we know that primary red is somewhere around 78. Um, and at the other end, we know we get a little bit bluish here, so that's 66, 65, 58, 70. All right, so let's try to go from, let's just try 60 to 70 on this image, and let's see what happens. Go to Script, Utilities, Color Mask, and we go from, now it's probably not going to be perfect, but let's try, 60 almost got it to 70 and there we are we are approximating what I was trying to do the first time around by uh, capturing only those parts of the image that are basically reddish and protecting all the other parts so there you have it I think that's the complete story here of this uh, amendment. I hate doing these things. I wish I knew the right answer the first time around, but there you have it. Thank you very much, and um, I hope you enjoy using this tool. Well, I guess I'm not quite done with this color space thing, because I just really want to know the answer. There's got to be an answer. I want to see what those H values look like when we look at an image of all of the colors. So I have an image that looks like this, and this might be, I don't know, representative in the sense that not only do we have the spread of colors horizontally, but we also have variation in brightness kind of vertically, and that's why it gives us this kind of form here. Um, and then we can analyze this image, but we can do it instead of using the color mask tool, we can just use pixel math. Uh, basically, we can do the same thing that appears in the color mask tool with just pixel math itself. We can look at these lowercase h values. So let's go to pixel math and the function, I found it here, it's this one. It's the CIEH uh, function. If you give it an image it will return the h value. Though this particular function returns the value in a range of 0 to 1. But like in the color mask tool, the range that you'll often see is 0 to 360. So there's another function here, C-I-E-H-D, and that's the one that returns 0 to 360. Cool. So now we have a tool we can use. And what I want to do is analyze this image, but I'm going to use pixel math to do it with that function. Um, here, I'll keep the editor up because I want to make sure that I type this correctly. So if we do if the value of H there, and I need to give it the image, so that's target T. If it is, uh, let's say, greater than 10, 10 degrees, but now I'm going to say also less than some other thing, so it'll make, instead of being a thin, thin, super thin black line of one pixel or so, I'm going to make it a few pixels. So I'm going to say, and um, less than, so I think I need to type this out again. 
target t. And then I just need to say less than, I don't know, 12. I'm going to make it a small range. Then do something. Well, I'm going to make it print black. Otherwise, don't do anything. And that's just target t. That statement should make black as we march across the image. And I'm just going to change this value here in units of 10. Now, this might be very boring. But it is kind of cool. It's a little suspenseful to see what happens as you march across the image in units of 10. So um, I'll show you the first handful of these things, and then I'll just do the rest of them, um, and then I'll show you the result, which is just, I think it's interesting. So I've only done a few, a few of them, and I already know it's going to be interesting. So let's see what happens. First, let me parse this. It looks like I typed that correctly. So then let's apply this to the image. Oop. And there's a black line. Isn't that weird? So that's a constant value of h uh, between 10 and 12. So now if I increase this, instead of it being 10, I'll do 20. But I'm still going to keep this units of 2. So it has a, just a range of 2 there. Oh, that should be a 12. Oh, uh, no, that's 22. I did that right, 22. And we do this again. And now we have another little line. Cool. So now we do 30, 32 here. Now, so far, they're looking, you know, relatively equally spaced, right? So now let's do 40, 42. You're thinking to yourself, is he really going to go all the way across 60? And the answer is yes, 62, because there is a mystery here. Do you see how the spacing is changing? Watch what happens here. 70, 72. Not only is the spacing changing, it's even getting thicker. Even my range of two shows interesting effects. So now we do 80 and 82. All right, now look at this. And then you do 90. So you can see why this space is such a, an odd one. Um, and you need to be very careful, actually, because in some color parts of the spectrum, if you will, differences in just a few values in H make a big difference in how much of that you're selecting. So it's almost like it's insensitive in some areas in that magenta area, but then it becomes much more sensitive kind of in this more orangish area, for example, um, and so on. So I just wanted to really give you the sense that there is something going on to this thing that it's interesting to pay attention to. Look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and continue and do the whole thing. I have no idea if this is even a useful thing or not, but it is an investigation into this color space. Look at that. Come on. That's just weird. That is just totally weird. So you can see why a color wheel would be difficult to somehow show. Three. To indicate this particular space. So I'll be right back. Let me finish. All right. Well, here's the weirdness. Um, and I think the takeaway lesson here is that it is not, e obviously not equally spaced. So there are going to be some colors like yellow, where if we measure here, the difference between all of this yellow is only, you know, five or six units in H space, whereas you have many more units here uh, in terms of a range and what by my eye I would just call kind of a magenta pink. Um, that range is much larger, which means it would be easier to select in some sense. Uh, because here, if I am on, you know, plus or minus just a few, I'm going to get more of an orange or, or a green on the other side. So um, it is interesting to analyze, and I find it also interesting that blue itself, what I would call primary blue, really does appear to be just a few values in H space. 
So if you really want to get primary blue, um, that color, um, at least that value in H space, is only one or two, or even maybe three or four at the most, uh, units, which is, a, a, I don't know, I think that's something, there's something to be learned from this when you think about colors in H space, if you're going to be selecting them, say, using the color mask tool. So that concludes, I think, I hope, everything that I could possibly think about this particular um, demonstration. Thanks.